Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The little things in life are the big things. Most days are not full of earth-shaking events. Most days are routine, ordinary, nothing really special. But even our most ordinary experiences can touch issues of great depth. There was a medieval theologian named Nicholas of Cusa who said, God is the minimum as well as the maximum. In other words, the small things in everyday life are no less sacred than the great issues of human existence. The little things in life are the big things. That goes for the pleasures of life. You know, you really can't go to Disneyland or a pro football game or Las Vegas or the greatest party in your life every single day. But there are joys to be found in the ordinary. Years ago, I found a book by a woman named Barbara Holland called Endangered Pleasures. She writes that subtly, in little ways, joy has been leaking out of our lives. And she says it's an easy trap to fall into. Somehow, bad news is easier to believe and more important than good. Joyful people singing of blue skies always sound slightly simple-minded. The prophets of doom sound so much better educated, so much more likely to be right. The small pleasures of the ordinary day come to seem almost contemptible and glance off us lightly. And the rest of her little book is a collection of chapters singing the praises of ordinary pleasures. Things like taking a bath, drinking coffee, picking out clothes, going barefoot, taking naps, travel, conversation, lunch, pets, the four seasons, books, babies, and boats, and a whole lot more. I love her book, because I think she's right. The little things in life are the big things. Timothy Ferris is a science writer who produced a gorgeous book called Galaxies. The book is full of lush pictures of deep space with stars and nebulae and galaxies spangled across the universe. And looking at these pictures make us feel so tiny, truly microscopic. And Ferris writes this, it is true that we are tiny relative to the cosmos. Everything is tiny relative to the cosmos, even a galaxy is one among billions. Now the fret about this is to confuse size with stature. The truth is found not only by gaping at the grand, but by scrutinizing the small. The human body is a galaxy to a microbe, yet without microbes, our bodies would not live for an hour. If we feel awe, and we should, let us address it not to size, but to being. And we share being with the galaxies themselves. In other words, again, the little things in life are the big things. Jesus said, whoever is faithful in little is also faithful in much. The one who is dishonest with little is also dishonest with much. And there it is again. The little things in life are the big things. Following Jesus means paying attention to the frequent and familiar events and chores of each day, no matter how small and insignificant they seem. Life is full of opportunities that seem small. Let's be honest, this coming week, none of us are going to end a war, or write a book, or meet with a president, or invent the next great e-device. But very likely, we will have the opportunity to write a note or to give a cup of cold water to someone 
or visit a person who needs it, or teach a Sunday school class, or share a meal with somebody, or tell a child a story, or feed a pet that belongs to a neighbor. The little things in life are the big things. It's true of pleasures and it's true of choices. The little things can make such a difference. A small gesture to someone at the right time can make a huge, huge difference. It's also true that bad choices, even the small ones, can lead to bigger problems. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Freddy. And when Freddy was six, he was in the car with his dad. His dad was speeding and got pulled over by a village policeman. And when the dad handed that cop his driver's license, he had a $50 bill along with it to get out of the ticket. And a little later, he told his son, it's all right, son. Everybody does it. Well, then there was a time Freddie was nine. He went shopping with his mom. And the girl at the checkout accidentally gave mom the wrong change. A $50 bill instead of a $5 bill. Mom quietly tucked it into her purse. And later when Freddie asked about it, she said, it's okay, everybody does it. Freddie got a job in a grocery store when he was 16. The boss told him to hide the overripe tomatoes at the bottom of each basket and put the greener ones up on top. The boss said, it's just good business. Well, then Fred went off to college. And one day, another student offered to sell him the answers to a big exam that was coming up. Fred bought the answers, but he got caught, and he was expelled for cheating. His parents were livid. How could you do this to us? If there's anything the adult world can't stand, it's a person who's dishonest. That story warns us of the power of the small choices we make. Even small choices can make a big difference. Jesus said, whoever is faithful with little is also faithful with much. The little things in life are the big things. Even in the little things, choose honor and integrity. And even in the little things, you can find joy.